Welcome to this video in which several people have um, contributed remotely in helping us reflect on the events of Good Friday. For me, the cross conveys so powerfully a God who suffers, whose identification with us human beings is so total and without reserve that he endures injustice, mockery, abuse, torture, suffering and death, and who through the resurrection of Jesus proclaims the victory of God's love for all time. Although we are separated this year, yet I believe especially when we gather around the cross, we find a profound spiritual unity. And I hope you sense some of that with you today. Thank you. Hello everybody. This is our cross, which we made out of twigs that we found from the woods and then mummy cleaned them. We cling to our cross as a reminder of Jesus's unfailing love for each and every one of us. Take care. Bye. Hope you're all okay. I hold on to the cross because I pray for a fairer world for everyone. The Passion According to Mark They went to a place called Gethsemane and he said to his disciples Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated and said to them I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther he threw himself to the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, 
For you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple, teaching, and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following Jesus, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false, test false testimony against him, saying, We heard him saying, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, but not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? Have you, you have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then, after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, 
Certainly, Leo, you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passer-by, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots, to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, 
put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. This, this is, is the, the word, word of, of the Lord. Lord. We have come into a familiar place to many of you watching this. And yet always on this day, it feels strange and dissonant. The sanctuary stripped bare on Good Friday, reflecting the nakedness of our Lord Jesus Christ abused, bruised, and killed upon the cross. And held there by nails. A nail of human inhumanity, one to another. A nail of abuse towards the world, God's creation, God's gift to us and entrusted to us. And a nail which is all human suffering gathered and embraced by the crucified arms of God in Jesus Christ. for us all as we make our way through this holy week, this strange and dissonant holy week, we especially wonder and behold a God who understands our weakness, our frailty, our need, and who shares with us that he may transform for us our sickness into his health. Last year's Paschal light still glimmers like the life of Jesus on the cross, soon to be extinguished. And soon, when we gather again in this way, we will see a new Easter candle, a light. But that is the story for another day. Today we will reflect on the cross
and reflect on a God who died and dies for us. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Therefore we pray to our Heavenly Father for people everywhere according to their needs. Simon from Cyrene was forced to carry the cross for your Son. Give us the grace to lift heavy loads from those we meet and to stand with those condemned to die. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Your son watched the soldiers cast lots to share his clothes. Transform the hearts of those who make a profit from their victims and those whose hearts are hardened by their work. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The thief who was crucified with Jesus was promised a place in your kingdom. Give pardon and hope, healing and peace to all those who look death in the face. And we pray especially for all those who are suffering at this time, in body, mind or spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. From the cross, Jesus entrusted Mary, his mother, and John, his disciples, into each other's care. Help us to care for one another and fill our homes with your spirit of your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The centurion was astonished to recognise your glory in the crucified Messiah. Open the minds of those who do not know you to grasp in your Son the meaning of life and death. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Joseph of Arimathea came to take your son's body away. Give hope and faith to the dying and bereaved, gentleness to those who can minister to them, and courage to those whose, whose faith is kept a secret. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Simon and Joseph Mary and John became part of the life of your church in Jerusalem. Bring into your church today a varied company of people to walk with Christ in the way of his passion and to find their salvation in the victory of his cross. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. This reading is from Malcolm Geitz's Moving Sonnets, which he wrote for Stations of the Cross. Malcolm is a priest and poet-songwriter, and he is chaplain to Girton College, Cambridge. Crucifixion. Jesus is nailed to the cross. See, as they strip the robe from off his back and spread his arms and nail them to the cross, the dark nails pierce him and the sky turns black and love is firmly fastened onto loss. But here a pure change happens. On this tree, 
loss becomes gain, death opens into birth. Here, wounding heals and fastening makes free. Earth breathes in heaven, heaven roots in earth. And here we see the length, the breadth, the height, where love and hatred meet and love stays true. Where sin meets grace and darkness turns to light, we see what love can bear and be and do. And here our Saviour calls us to his side. His love is free, his arms are open wide. Thank you to all who have contributed to this video. We'll be issuing another one on Sunday morning as we celebrate Easter Day. I'll also be live streaming a Eucharist at 6 a.m. But you can access that at a more leisurely hour if you wish later on. Meanwhile, um, God bless you. God bless us all and help us by clinging to the cross, know that God's love embraces and holds us close to him and close to one another. Thank you.